Captain, what do you think? Professional training or no professional training? This is the question for every young actor who's coming to Los Angeles. I feel like people ask me all the time, do you need to go to acting school to be an actor? Do I need to go to college or university to study theater to be a working actor? While I could just give my opinion, I felt like I should branch out and get everybody else's opinion. So I called a bunch of friends and I brought them in here and some people sent in tapes and they're all working actors, people who've been out here for years, some in New York, some in LA, but they're all hardworking and really great people. And I hope that their perspective kind of helps you guys out as you're making this decision to be an actor. I asked them a bunch of questions and I asked the same questions to myself. I hope you guys like it. And yeah, uh, get excited, let's do it. Do you think it is necessary to have professional training to be an actor? Ah, oof. this is tricky. That question opens up a can of worms. Every actor has to do what's best for them. Hi there, I'm transgender supermodel Ari Swanzer. Don't believe me, you can Google it. I have zero acting education except for being in the closet for about 17 years, <laughs> which is pretty good because you get to study people's mannerisms and what you're not supposed to do all the time. So I notice what people wear, how they move, their gait, how they walk. I've been studying all that stuff for years. I did have a professional runway coach. His name was Junior Jean, that was years ago. And uh, he taught me how to walk down the runway and how to be the best model ever, creating angles on camera. What else? I've had, I guess I've had no real training. I'm funny because I was bullied as a child. <laughs> so I, I wasn't like super attractive. So I had to uh, develop a personality, which really helped me later on down the line. <laughs> I do not think it's necessary to have professional training to be an actor because you just don't. If they want you, they want you. And if they don't, they don't. You think Tiffany Haddish ever took an acting class? <laughs> she didn't. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go on record as to say she didn't. I'm gonna say she was a really great comedian that got popular and that's how some people just make it. Some people make it through nepotism. Hey, hey, my name is Griffin Burns and I'm a full-time voice actor and commercial actor based in Los Angeles. I've lived here for almost nine years and I've been working full-time in the industry for about five and a half, almost six. Done literally thousands of voiceovers. If you watch anime or play video games or listen to the radio, watch TV, you've probably heard me. Okay, I need to clarify something. Whoever said you need to be a tourist to appreciate the city clearly never spent time with superheroes. Then I voice kids' toys. Here's one right here. This is Movi. He was uh, in Target last year. Maybe you got it for your niece or nephew if you're, or your children. Hi, I'm Movi. Let's have some fun. Hi, I'm Movi. Calm down, Movi. Do you think it's necessary to have professional training to be an actor? I'd say largely my answer would be yes. I work specifically in voiceover and commercials, and I took classes for both of those genres of acting. I wasn't in a conservatory program. I didn't study theater for years and years, but I did take some classes. Aside from those classes was on the job and at my agent's office auditioning for voiceovers or with friends or practicing here uh, at home in front of the camera or in the booth here recording. Also, people have different levels of natural ability. You know, some people acting comes a little easier to, to them than others. So you might not need as much training or uh, you might need more. And there's certain genres of acting that I'd say training might hurt you. Uh, commercials is one. You kind of have to let your theater training go when you go to a commercial audition. They're looking for real people. They want to believe that the people uh, in commercials are plucked off the street. If anything for commercials, improv is the one thing that you should study. Hi, I'm Alexandra. Um, I've been in LA for seven years, so long. So I do a lot of commercial work. I'm like typical commercial actress, and then I've had a couple of other gigs, a TV show called Salem, a recurring on that, and um, a movie called Mothers and Daughters with um, some pretty cool people, Sharon Stone and Selma Blair, and um, just other little tiny gigs like that. What acting education do you have? I did a two-year program in New York City, the New York Conservatory of Dramatic Arts, 
which was like any drama school full of drama. Okay, do I think it's necessary to have professional training to be an actor? Um, I don't think it's necessary. There are plenty of people who do it without. However, I do think it can be super helpful. Um, it's kind of like filling up your toolbox with a bunch of tools. The more tools you have, the more ways you have to solve a problem when, when you have one. Um, so I think it can be incredibly useful. Here's my feeling about good acting education. Julia was great for me. It's not for everybody. There's certainly no defined way to become an actor, as we know from all the biographies we've read. So for me, the most important thing about the acting education was the group of friends that I made, or colleagues more specifically. In our business, we inevitably go through times when we kind of don't know up from down. So to be able to go back to people that you've known for a really long time is super key. And also to have a tool belt of things, whether that's uh, a sort of a voice and speech thing or a movement thing, just something that you can kind of dig back into. It's been very, very important for the times when you're not working. So you have something to look back on, so you have something to hold on to. My classmates are still people in my life that I sit down together with and they immediately see right through me. Yeah, I hope that's helpful to somebody. My education, what worked for me, is from the time I was a little kid like from the time I could just say words and form a sentence, I was on a stage. My parents put me on a stage where I sang and I danced and I acted and I did it inside school systems and I did it outside of the school system. I did it in like professional theater. I did it in dinner theater. I did it in community theater. There was never a time where I wasn't acting. I shan't mince words with you for long. I am challenging you, sir, to a duel. I accept. <laughs> Are you serious? Then, when I sort of grew up, I rejected all of that and became a journalist. For every hour that I interviewed someone who was involved in either some, something dramatic, something funny, something real, something authentic, I spent eight hours for every hour I interviewed somebody in the edit room, watching them frame by frame. I learned to study people and how they reacted to real things. And from that, I gauged my own sort of, my own acting sort of meter what felt real to me and what didn't feel real to me. And I applied all that to what I do when I'm on TV. You know, there are levels of authenticity in each genre, whether it be drama or comedy. And whatever that thing is for you, it should just never feel like acting. I think it's increasingly necessary to be multi-hyphenated in this industry which means to be versatile enough to be able to produce, pitch, write, and edit your own content. So go to a school that has those electives where you can learn those skills. As far as acting school goes, I believe that it's very, very important. Even if you are a good seasoned actor, you, you need to go to an acting class if you're not already working to keep what we call the craft sharp. As one of my favorite acting coaches, uh, Leslie Kahn has said, if you consider yourself an actor, whether you're working or not, you should be acting every day. It's like going to the gym. The more you work out, the stronger and more prepared you will be when you book that breakout role. Not to mention, you meet people in class, and those people will become your support system and friends, and the people that will put you on tape last minute because your agent tells you your 11 page audition is due by 9 a.m. the next day even though you just got it at 7 p.m. after your third or fourth happy hour tequila uh, I want to die. is it necessary to have training to be a professional actor I would say yes and no taking classes and having life experiences can kind of get you to develop yourself as a person and therefore develop you as, a, as an actor. So I think that you need a certain amount of perspective and life experience and a little bit of acting classes never hurt. Were there any classes or lessons that stood out to you? Hey, my name is Gregory James Cohen. I've been acting uh, in the industry for a little over six years. I just recently moved to Los Angeles from New York. I started doing mostly theater uh, after college. And then I got into 
film, television. I've been on CW's Dynasty. Uh, I've been on The Inspectors on CBS. Done a few feature films. One that's releasing this August 2019. Uh, about a priest that turns into a dinosaur and fights crime and ninjas, and it's called The Velocipaster. And I play The Velocipaster. The biggest, like, thing that stuck out for me in acting classes was actually commercial class with a casting director that I took for six weeks. His name is David Cady in New York. Um, and it was just doing stuff like this, uh, sitting on camera, uh, talking to the camera, and uh, thinking that we had to do something, you know, to, like, you know, create make the copy come alive, but the lesson that he taught us was you are enough. Uh, just you being you and just like letting your personality shine through, that is enough. You don't have to be anything else. Do that and you'll be good. That's true. Yeah. Hey Will, sorry I'm doing this from my car. Uh, I had an audition and a meeting in Santa Monica today actually, so hopefully that's pertinent to what you're doing with this video. I think that was an aha moment for me where it's like, do your work, know when your work is done, then when you get there, it has to move, for it to feel really good and fulfilling, I think it has to move into that part of the brain where you're not thinking about it so much, where you're not forcing it, you're just kinda, you're not worried about your lines, you're not worried about your, hitting your mark, you just, you've done it enough, rehearsed enough, where you get to that point where you're like, ah, and it becomes play again. But I don't think you can get to play if you haven't done the work. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can wing it and get away with it, and probably some people are better at it than I am. But I can only really get to play on the day if I've done the work to allow me to get there and to let go and not feel panicked about whatever, the minutia. I had a teacher in New York, Pete Mataliano, who um, taught us what he called a boilerplate, which I use for all of my characters that I play now when I get to like dive in, where you go through and solely based on what you get in the script, you list everything from where was this person born, what was their age, what's their favorite kind of wine, what's their least favorite kind of wine, what's their favorite book, what's their least favorite. So really defining those specific characteristics about them, but without making it up. Most people are so fixated on the way they look and their hair when they come to Los Angeles, they forget that they sound like shit, meaning their voices sound like shit. And I do believe that there is a benefit for everyone to somehow undertake formal, experienced, expert vocal training and speech. I'm old fashioned that way. I've been through like probably too many auditions that I want to count, maybe like thousands. What I've learned is that if you don't know who the character is and you haven't made up your mind what your take is and what your commitment is to the character, then you will be found out the moment you start talking. So if you don't come in with a fully shaped character, and I'm talking about all the things that exist off the page, then they'll know, and you're not gonna get the part. But it's better to be totally off the mark with a fully shaped, formed character than it is to just go in and try to fake it and wing it. And two, I think I've learned that uh, if you are nervous in a casting, the folks across on the other side of the camera are just as nervous as you are because you're making them nervous. I think you go in and you try to not put too much importance on the casting moment. It is just a work session with you and the producer. Go in with what you think is right. Deliver the material confidently and friendly, uh, in a friendly way, but don't think about how it will alter the course of your life before you walk in the door. If I get this role, God, I'll be able to pay my electric bill. If I get to buy a new car, I'll be able to afford a house. Or I'll, all of that pressure essentially becomes like just like a, a tire that is ready to burst. And usually people burst in the room in front of the people and everybody feels uncomfortable and it's just weird. You just have to basically just treat it like work. It's just another day at work, a job where you went in, you read for the folks. If you get the part, great. But most of the time you will not get it. In fact, almost all of the time you'll not get the role. So might as well have fun with it. Might as well just sort of look at it as just another day in the life of being an actor, because that's really what we do. We audition. Were there any classes or lessons that stood out to me? I think probably one of the most impactful things that happened to me, I remember I was in Acting 2, uh, which was the name of the class in, in college. So I was performing the scene and I dropped a pen on the ground and 
I remember kind of being like, oh no, what do I do? Do I pick up the pen? Do I not pick up the pen? What is, and my acting professor just goes, what would you do in real life if you were having a conversation and you dropped a pen on the ground? You would pick it up. It seems like such a small thing, but that translates into everything that you do. It gives you so much freedom when you realize that like, just be a person. I got to act on my impulses and be alive in that moment like a real person. So if you drop a pen during a scene, pick it up because that's what you would do. Or if it's not what you would do, then don't pick up that pen. It's how the character would respond to said thing happening. So if you could do it all over again, hmm. um, what would you do differently? Like, do I have regrets? <laughs> the big question. I like to say, I live with no regret. Came through tripping Aquafina, I'm sipping 15, kept a weapon on me. Blow make bitches, I'm my, my business, stack chicken like what it's gonna be. Crew in the cut, and hey, you want us to run when I tell a bit peace. Love is love. Love is love.